Stacy Bell Paint Fans. How are you today? It's Melissa coming to you live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Dixie Bell Paint page to hang out, sit on the floor, and play with some paint. So how you doing? Everybody uh, ready for some farmhouse magic to happen today? I am uh, going to work on this cute little rustic cabinet and I thought maybe you'd like to come along for the ride. So welcome and thank you for joining me. My name is Melissa. I am the owner and artist at the Top Drawer RVA. I am Dixie Bell's newest brand ambassador and I'm always sitting on the floor getting super messy and taking you along on these fun little journeys. So let's begin, shall we? All right, so I know that you're all looking at this cabinet beside me thinking, what was she thinking when she bought this cabinet? <laughs> to be honest with you, I bought it sight unseen. I bought a lot of my items at auction. Um, and sometimes I buy things and I go to pick them up and I think, well, that was a big giant mistake. But I have a couple tips and tricks to show you about all of these really ugly ducklings that will be super beneficial for you as a painter because I think that every piece of furniture kind of deserves a chance. And you know, sometimes I find that the uglier the furniture, the better it turns out. So these little rustic cabinets, I've done three or four of them now. This one is actually really cool because it is a handmade cabinet. Somebody made this cabinet um, a really long time ago. It's super old. You can see these amazing funky little joints. It is super weird, but super fabulous. And we're gonna make it even more farmhouse fabulous today. So let's do this, shall we? Let's put this drawer in. Okay. So this cabinet is not without its issues. It has a lot of um, minor issues. And this is where I'm gonna teach you my tips and tricks to rolling with what you're working with rather than fighting against it, okay? So this cabinet did have a minor bit of repair done on it, okay? So at the bottom, down here in the far corner, there was a chunk of cabinet missing. Now, when there's a little bit of something missing somewhere, you can often use Dixie Bell's mud, which is a paste that you use to fill in holes, cracks, veneer issues, comes in three colors, it's really cool. Um, I use it a lot for veneer issues that are small, but when you have a corner on the base of your cabinet that might be broken, chipped, or missing, you don't want to use mud because it's not going to be strong enough to hold. If somebody moves this, rocks this, pulls it across the floor, that mud will crack or crumble because it is not strong enough to support a full corner. So I'm going to aim your camera down here and show you what I did. And this is a really easy tip, okay? So measure the side of your cabinet. This cabinet number one was kind of top heavy. The base didn't really match the top. Like I said, somebody made this a long time ago. I mean, very long time ago. I see some square nails on here, which tells me it's super old. So um, you're gonna measure the side of your cabinet and what you do to one side, you're gonna want to do to the other. I went into my little she shed out there and I got out some wood. This is just basic wood that I use when I'm usually building tops. I have extra scrap. I keep all of my garbage all of the time. Okay, I cut it to the length of my side of the cabinet. You can see I've done two, right? It's on both sides, same thing. Then I came in with my drill and hello, mama got a new drill for Christmas. Check that out, new powerful drill. So I came in here with my drill and I screwed two screws in the um, side of the wood. And I actually the trick is to screw it in further than you need to so that your screw goes in a little bit further. And then I cover that screw with Dixie Bell mud. This means now when I go in to paint this project, because both sides match, I've covered that missing chunk of cabinet that was at the bottom, you're not going to see. It's going to balance out and I do this a lot on the basis of cabinets that have been missing parts or missing corners. So keep that in mind. Keep your scrap wood. See how it's on the seam on both sides? And when you paint over top of it, this weird and wild and wonderful cabinet, it's not going to look like I added those on. If anything, it's going to make it work better because when you look at the top, the top was wider than the base. All right, <laughs> so let's begin with some painting. Let's talk about the plan for this piece. Um, adding the sides, using the Dixie Bell mud, and then cleaning really well with white lightning, white lightning because ew, so dirty. It was super dirty, super gross. So white lightning is your powdered base cleaner that you disperse into a spray bottle. You clean it entirely. If you were to see the dirt that came off of this piece, you would be super grossed out. I also cleaned the inside of the cabinet, took the drawer out, cleaned the inside of the drawer as well as the inside cubby of the cabinet. Once you have cleaned everything well, you are ready for paint. What else did I notice when I was cleaning it? Well, I noticed that there was some tannins coming off onto my paper towel. 
Um, tannins are that, that stain, that, that color in the wood that bleeds out when you're cleaning. If you clean and clean and clean and clean and your rags are still brown and pink and gross, that means you need to do a little bit more prep work before you begin, okay? So after I cleaned this project, attached my two sides, I did not do the mud because mud was last, okay? I cleaned it, I added these sides, I then came in with my boss. Well, what is boss? Boss is going to be my stain blocking primer to prevent those tannins and bleed through from coming out because we are gonna paint a wild and wonderful farmhouse scene on this piece today. There's gonna to be white, there's gonna be skies, there's gonna be clouds. I didn't want any of those, those tannins leaching through my paint and making a problem um, where there should not be one. So we did a coat of the Boss in clear. Boss comes in three colors, clear, white, and gray. Uh, I just happen to use clear because my plan is actually to sand back all of these ragged edges and make this rustic cabinet be super rustic. All right, thank you for hanging in for all that prep. <laughs> now we're ready to play with some paint. What do you say, want to? I do, I'm kind of excited. And FYI, we're gonna start this project today. I'm going to push it aside and we're going to bring it back next week because I'm gonna do this entire piece live on camera. Um, we're gonna get a little Bob Ross in here. We're gonna do some scenic painting, all right? Let's begin. So this cabinet has weird hinges, weird knobs. We're gonna paint right over top of all of it. We're gonna paint over top of those little boards that we added on the side. I'm going to leave the top piece the original stain. And then next week, we will decide if we're going to use hemp oil to bring it back or if we're gonna use gel stain to darken it. Uh, I want to wait and see what it looks like with the base of the cabinet painted. So leaving the hardware on, leaving the hinges on, we're going to paint right over top. Let's begin. So we're doing farmhouse today. What does farmhouse mean to most people? It means white. It means distressed. It means pretty basic. Not my style. <laughs> I cannot. I can. It, it's like pulling teeth out to paint white for me. So we are actually going to paint a whole entire farm scene on here, um, including roosters and barns and silos. And you guys, this is not hard. If you follow along and learn what I'm teaching you today, you are going to be able to paint this as well. And I've done it on probably four or five different cabinets and it sells like hotcakes. Everybody loves a hand painted scene. So you are going to be able to do this too. All right. A couple brushes on the floor today. I have my medium flat brush. I have my new Scarlet brush on the floor. Fancy pants. It's a palm brush that's synthetic and amazing for blending. We're going to use this for the sky today. Okay. So I wet my brush because I like my brushes to be a little damp when I'm applying the paint. We're going to go in and use a lot of colors today. Don't be overwhelmed with the amount of, amount of colors that we're putting on this piece. I will list every single color um, in my finished product when I do post it on Facebook. Okay. To start off with, I like a moody sky, right? I told you we're getting Bob Ross in here. Don't judge me. We're, we're going to bring it down. We're bringing calm into 2021 this year. So let's get started. All right. Camera's going up a little bit and we're going to start with Mason Dixon Gray. Mason Dixon Gray, believe it or not, is the most perfect sky color to start all of your skies with. I've taped off these little edges because I told you I'm leaving the top piece and we are not painting this piece. We are going to be staining this piece or hemp oiling that piece. At this point, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. We'll get there next week. So for now, I'm just gonna deposit a bunch of really beautiful Mason Dixon Gray. These joints, y'all, they're so weird. This, this cabinet has had so many weird things put on it. Like I can't, I can't explain it to you. It's so rustic that it, it's screaming farmhouse to me. It's just yelling at me that I must be beautiful and painted and re-loved again for the next hundred years because somebody made this and loved this cabinet and I'm gonna make it great again. I'm kind of pumped and excited about this. So we're gonna put on Mason Dixon Gray. I have to turn this a little bit, make sure I got the other side of the knob. And yes, there's going to be divots and marks and all sorts of crunchy deliciousness on this piece. And that is good because I want it there. I want to see these rustic holes. I want to see all these little marks down here. See these? That is amazing to me. We are going to leave all of that because this piece is going to be painted in that gorgeous farm scene. 
And all of that is just gonna make it look a thousand times better. I'm not even putting my paint in those little cracks, okay? All right, so Mason Dixon Gray is going on. And we're going to do the same thing and kind of bring it down to a certain point. And then we're gonna to start to create a sky on the piece. Sound good? Sounds good? Hey, Susan, I see you watching. Hey, Cheryl. So we're gonna paint this beautiful sky. Now, I know you've seen me paint skies before, but here's the thing about the sky. It never looks the same every time you do it. It always looks a little different, right? And you can change it to be what you like. Um, I'm also going to be double dipping my brushes today. No judgment. I want to mash these colors together. Um, I'm actually gonna take a little bit right now of some Savannah Mist and deposit it onto this part of the cabinet, okay? So I've got my Mason Dixon Gray. Really, really simple kind of rustic style painting. I, I wanna see all of this junk. I'm not being neat, I'm not being tidy. It's not this style of cabinet. I'm gonna dip in to a little bit of this Savannah Mist because skies are not always perfect, right? You don't get a gray sky across the entire perfect part of a cabinet. You don't. You wanna kinda of change it as you go along. So I'm gonna lighten it a little bit in certain areas and darken it a little bit in certain areas. So bear with me. Like I said, we're gonna open up all of the colors and play with all of the things. I was actually thinking today that I wanna get like some small containers and deposit a bunch of Dixie Bell colors into small containers that would be perfect for painting all of these scenes because I open these giant containers and I worry about them drying out <laughs> on the floor. It'd be great if I could just set up some cute little containers that would be the perfect size. I think maybe that'll be involved in my 2020 workshop revamp to add a little bit more to my painting. So I'm bringing this in. I'm just doing the top of the door right now. I know you can't see me, but I'm just doing that, okay? I'm just doing the top. I'm gonna come back in with some of that Savannah Mist again, the same brush, and drag it around. See all these holes? Leaving them. Want them there. They're gonna be part of the piece. This all goes with the whole work smarter, not harder, um, and kind of gauge what your piece is gonna to want to be, okay? Okay, so now we have Mason Dixon Gray, a little bit of Savannah Mist. I have got some sea glass in a smaller container because it was almost empty which is this beautiful shade of blue. I'm gonna put some paint onto a plate down here that I have on the floor. And we're going to travel some of this sky to be a little bit more blue down here. Because I don't want it all gray. You can't have everywhere be a cranky sky. We're gonna mix it up a little bit. I put out my, my beautiful scarlet brush to blend, but to be honest with you, I don't think I'm gonna need it. So today we're going to focus on background, which is going to be sky, clouds, and the base, which will be greens, browns, farmhouse, looking pretty. Okay, so when I look at this, I feel like this is just a little bit too light. I want to darken it just a bit. Remember, there's going to be um, clouds over top of all of this, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to get us down to where the grass is going to meet. that blue right here in the middle. I'm hand painting lately. Does anybody else love it as much as I love it? It's like kind of my, my relaxing jam. I get all like in the zone with music and hand painting, and, but I'm gonna be doing all this live, so you're all gonna have to bear with me. Maybe I won't talk so much. There's one thing we know that I like to do is talk. There's always a mute button, right? <laughs> you can always mute me. Mute me. All right, so more Savannah Mist coming in right over top of those hinges. Remember, I've clear bossed this whole thing, but I'm gonna go right over top of these hinges because if you paint over top of your hardware and your hinges, they kind of just disappear. They don't really stand out as much. After this entire piece has been painted, we will be adding um, Dixie Dirt 
to the whole thing as well. Okay? So let's add some more blue sky coming down here. I like a gray sky, but we shouldn't be all doom and gloom, right? We're going to be painting cute things on here. So again, leaving all of these little divots, leaving all of these little marks because I'm making it part of the piece. Okay, putting my glasses on. If I miss any of your comments because I do a lot of painting and not a lot of reading stuff, I do go back and watch my videos after um, and then chat with anybody who has a, a question. Plus, Dixie Bell is moderating on here with me today, so they are happy to help. I'm going to add a little bit more Savannah Mist up here. I don't want it to be totally gray. So we're going to bring the sky down a little bit further than you would think I normally would bring the sky because I really don't know where I want my grass to start for this barn scene. I have a feeling my barn will actually be sitting right here. Um, so for now, I'm just kind of getting my colors down, planning where they're going to be all in the piece. What do we think so far? <laughs> it's not very exciting yet, right? It's not very exciting, but it will get there, I promise you. So I see somebody watching from Canada, my home country. Okay, let's do lots more blue on this side. And with the sea glass in the middle. I think I'm going to be bringing the bottom. I'm going to go this way and then this way with my green. Okay, so now what you have seen me do is lay down three colors to make a sky. There is majority of this piece is in Mason Dixon Gray. Then we come down and we have some Savannah Mist. Then we come down a little bit further and we have some Sea Glass, which is that kind of lightest blue down here. Okay. Now here's the trick. We're going to work on some clouds and we're going to work on some base greens and browns on the bottom of this cabinet. You can start your clouds now and really, really fade them in. Um, but I think I want my clouds to be a little bit more like punchy. So I'm going to wait for them to dry a little bit at the top here and then work on the clouds. But let's work on the base a little bit. So I'm going to put my brush down, close my paints, and we're going to open up all of the greens, all of the blues and all of the greens today. I'm also going to spray my brush so it doesn't get super dry and we're going to move along. Are we still hanging in? Everybody's still hanging in with me? Okay, so let's talk about the base of this project. We're going to do a couple different colors in the base. Um, and these are kind of my go-to greens for making a, a meadow. Okay, and I'm going to tell you what they all are first as I open them. And then that way you will have them in your brain. But don't remember or don't forget that I'm going to be listing all of these colors um, when the cabinet is actually all done and you're going to be able to check in. So we have collard greens, we have holy guacamole, my favorite green of all the Dixie Bell greens. I'm gonna open up some darker browns. So we have chocolate, which is this really pretty muddy color. And I think I even have some palmetto over here, which I do. So we have palmetto, collard greens, we have Holy guacamole, some mud puddle, and we're going to go even darker, okay? We're going to have some gravel road down here on the bottom because we're going to build up the dark on the base into the light greens to make our meadow. Hi, Wendy. I see you watching. Hi, Sherry. How are you today? Okay. So this cabinet has the blue sky, the moody kind of gray at the top. We're going to add the clouds in a minute. We're going to come down at the bottom. Hi, Amy. How are you? We're gonna come down to the bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did up here, okay? I'm gonna use one brush and I'm going to mix my colors together. So you mix these grays and blues to make your sky with one brush. You really weren't being, you know, super duper neat. I see a little spot I missed at the bottom of this knob, which probably doesn't matter because this is where the barn is gonna be. But we're gonna start at the base and work our way up. So then again, we have another flat medium brush. I'm gonna spray it with water. This just helps my paint kind of meld together. And I'm gonna start at the very bottom down here. And I'm gonna go with my darkest color, which is my gravel road, okay? So this is kind of a really good neutral. It's great for the base, 
when you don't really know how your meadow is going to start. You know it's going to be dark. It's always the darkest at the bottom, right, for me. I'm going to just lay this gravel road down right here at the base all the way around my cabinet. How far down can you see? Can you still see? After I get this gravel road over here, see now that I'm painting those sides that I added, they look like they were supposed to be there because this was way too big at the top um, for this skinny little base of a cabinet. So we fix the problem in two ways, by adding the sides to be a bit wider, works, and we covered up that big, huge gouge that was missing at the bottom. So here comes that gravel road. Again, helter skelter, because we're gonna be mushing all these colors together. We're really gonna be mixing them up. So that's gravel road here on the bottom. Next is gonna be collard greens, okay? Collard greens is like my next darkest color. And I'm actually gonna take a little bit of my gravel road off my brush with some paper towel. So I don't overly contaminate my collard greens. I still wanna see this beautiful green. A lot of layers, y'all. There's gonna be a lot of grass growing on here. Some trees, some rocks, some stumps possibly. And I really wanna do a rooster. I usually do crows, but I, I really think I'm gonna do a rooster this time. And I don't know if I'm gonna do like a shadow rooster, like I usually do my shadowy crows, or if I'm gonna do like a colorful rooster. It could go either way, but the rooster won't be till next week anyway, so you're gonna to have to come back and visit me and see. Okay, so now that we've got those two colors mushed together, I wanna to get a little bit lighter. I'm gonna bring in my holy guacamole. Now you're gonna see that these two paint colors are gonna to start to touch, but I'm not doing a clean line and I'm not blending the two together because my plan will be to start to let this get dry and then move into adding those layers, adding the meadow grass, right? Meadow grass isn't perfect. You're gonna want to make sure that your colors are mushed up and we're gonna really start to mush it together. But so far pretty simple, right? Do you think this is hard? I think you can do this. It helps to look at barns and look at the things you're gonna be painting on Pinterest um, kind of before you get started. Like today I was looking at roosters so that you can learn about how things will look on their placement. But I know for sure the barn's gonna get here and it's gonna go halfway on the other side too. So we're just adding that holy guacamole That is all I wanted to do for now. So you can see how those greens are not perfect, right? But that's nature. Nothing in nature is perfect. Nothing in nature is, is totally even Steven. I want this to go like this because this is just a base layer for what we are going to continue on with working um, on the piece, okay? So let's talk a little bit about clouds. How do you make clouds? Well, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can sit on the floor and hand paint clouds and that's gonna be hard work. <laughs> or you can do it the way that I'm gonna teach you how to do it. I'm gonna bring you in nice and close, so sorry for the jiggle joggling, but yikes, you need to come for a little ride. I'm gonna trap on the curtain. Hold tight, gotta pick you up. But I want you to be able to be closer, because everybody always says, put the camera closer so you can see what you're doing. There, came for a ride. Ready for my close up. You ready? All right, so I'm gonna use cotton for my clouds today. Cotton from Dixie Belle is the whitest of the whites. It's the whitest white that you can get. And clouds are usually white and fluffy and delicious. I'm also going to put a little bit more sea glass onto my tray because clouds are not 100% right. They're not always white. They have other colors mixed in. And this is a darker kind of a moody sky. So as we work and create these clouds together, we're going to change the look of the clouds. Some of them are going to be a bit darker, some are going to be a bit lighter, and it's really going to look natural. So I'm just going to take a small little crafting brush, okay? Nothing fancy. One that's been used a million times before. This one seems to have a little bit too much paint in it. I'm afraid to use it. Let's use this one. And I'm gonna dip into my white cotton, okay? So this is what you're starting with. You're gonna take your clouds. You're gonna look at your, look at your scene. Knowing that you're still gonna be painting barns and silos over top of these clouds, right? Because they're in the background. It doesn't really matter if they're perfect because you're gonna be covering up a lot of them, okay? So let's just start right in the middle, shall we? 
You look at that and you go, oh my gosh, she ruined it. What is she doing? That doesn't look like a cloud. Of course it doesn't. We're not there yet. So that white cotton is kind of mushing into my gray and my blues because it's still not 100% dry. I don't want it 100% dry because I kind of like to move my paint around. So I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and I've wet it with my spray misting bottle. And we're just going to start to build these clouds up. Okay. By using this little technique and just kind of twisting and mushing these clouds around, you're building layers and making them look authentic and real. They're not going to be fake looking clouds. They're going to get blended in. They're going to look amazing. You're going to just keep turning your paper towels and spraying it and building those layers. Can you start to see them? Start to see them happen? Isn't that pretty? So as they get dry, as you're moving along, you're depositing that white over top of each other. And don't be, don't be precise. This is not painting for perfection, okay? You can't paint for perfection when you're doing this. You need to paint just for the sake of making clouds. <laughs> because if you come into it thinking, oh my gosh, my clouds don't look perfect, this is not supposed to be perfect. This is art, you know? Make your version of what you wanna make for art. There's no rules. I always say that, y'all. There's no rules in painting. If you come in here all stressed out because your your sky doesn't look perfect, well then you're not gonna be happy. I almost think that less perfect is 100% better than perfect because who wants a perfect cloud in the sky? I already think that these two look a little bit too much alike. Let's add some up here that are just like a little bit more skinnier. See what happens. Again, kind of rolling my paper towel around so that I can get it kind of fresh every time I, I get in there and dab it because if you get too much paint on here it's going to contaminate the area and your white fluffy clouds won't be so white. Thank you Lynn. See Lynn says they're beautiful. You can also spray your piece and some of that will run down and it will make almost like rain clouds. There's no rules to this. Let's add a little bit of blue in here okay. I'm going to take another paintbrush that's sitting on the floor over here and I'm going to add some of that really pretty sea glass to the piece. I'm going to spray it too and touch it and bring them down. We're going to drag it over and bring it to the front of the piece too. So remember, we're going to have the barn down here covering some of these clouds. No, I put my glasses on so I can read comments and I can never see. <laughs> I can never see what I'm doing close up. Old lady, glasses on, glasses off. Glasses on, glasses off. Let's add a little bit more white over here. This is looking pretty. I just feel like I want to touch more white in the sky. Another thing you can do to a piece like this is to add um, some sea spray to your paint, which is going to give it a texture, and then your, your painting is going to become 3D and texturized, and it's going to be really pretty. I've done that before as well, and that works great on these pieces that are not perfect, that are lumpy and bumpy. Like I told you, I want to see these marks on the piece. I don't want them to disappear. I want all of these cracks to be in here. And don't be afraid to get your fingers in there. Move your paint around. You know, if you want it to drip down a little bit, spray it. Let it come down. Make some kind of moody rain clouds in there. See what happens when you start to spray your things and make them change a bit. But I know that majority right here is going to be covered by my silo on my piece. Okay, so there you go. One side, pretty much done. What do you think of this really pretty kind of cloudscape, landscape, on this super rustic cabinet that's going to be ready for a barn soon. So today we're going to work on all the sky and all the base and then next week we're going to work on how to draw a barn. We're going to work on how to draw um, crows or roosters. I can't decide what I want to do yet. And then we'll see. We're going to work on rocks at the base. We're going to do it all together, okay? Let's add a little bit of blue to these clouds in the front. I liked that on the side when that blue kind of came in. 
Are we digging this? Do you think you can try this? Is this something that you think that, you know, you can achieve? Because really, it's just getting messy and um, getting paint. What's in the sea spray that makes a texture? I, I believe it's like a, a thick additive that's like, it's a powder that you disperse into your paint. So it's just kind of thickening your paint. It's really changing the texture of your paint. I like to use my sea spray with a um, chip brush and really mash it on there and really get it in and move it around. I love some sea spray. Sea spray saves the day for all those pieces that are just so crusty and chunky that you don't know what you're gonna do with them. <laughs> it really does. Those pieces that you've, you know, you had to use slick stick because they were all different colors of paint and you were, you know, worried about texture and, and things like that. It just looks so much better when you use that sea spray and add the texture where you want it to be. See how soft and pretty those clouds are? Isn't that nice? Y'all keep commenting and I keep taking my glasses off and I can't see what's happening. Let's see. You're going to have to save the video and have, listen, you know what you can also do? Um, on my Facebook page, which I linked above in the description, is the Top Drawer RBA Facebook page, okay? In that Facebook page, I have saved another cabinet that is very similar, actually very similar in shape, um, and it's going to be basically the exact same finish. So you can watch multiple videos of how to paint um, a rustic kind of farm scene all over the place. You can watch it here on this page. You can watch it on my own Facebook page. I've got it um, a little bit of everywhere because this is, like I said, a scene that I do a lot because why work super hard on a cabinet that's already beat up and textured and old and handmade? You can't make something like this look glossy and high finish, you need to go with it. You need to have that piece speak to you and find out what it wants to be. And whenever I get a piece like this with a nice big flat surface that has, you know, all of these texture already, these crunchy little holes and deliciousness, I almost always paint some sort of a barn scene. I don't know, it's just what I like to do. So what do we think? Do we like this cloud scene? I feel like I need to do a little bit more up here. It's a little heavy. I either need to bring it up higher or change it up a little bit. So by just dipping your brush in the cotton, mashing your paint around, you're creating a beautiful scene that of course is gonna have a barn over top of it. <laughs> but you can do this, this isn't hard, but trust me. My daughter actually did a painting very similar to this um, for Christmas for my husband and she mimicked this technique, and she did pink and blue clouds. So if my 11 year old can do it, you all can do it too. I believe in you. So the more you rub it, the more kind of faded out those clouds get. You know, if you don't want them to be all the way over, say you want them just a little bit softer, you can do that. Look, see I have, I'm gonna add a little bit more over here. Just a little bit softer. It's almost New Year, y'all. What are you doing for New Year this year? Anybody have any fantastic plans? We're doing homemade pizza. And I think my husband still said he wants hamburgers even though we're making homemade pizza. <laughs> so we're just gonna eat a lot of delicious food around here and stay in. And that's probably what majority of the people are doing, right? COVID. But y'all, we're ringing in the new year and it's gonna be a good one. Trust me, it's gotta be better than this last year, right? And I had a pretty good last year. I enjoyed myself. I got to join the lovely team of brand ambassadors at Dixie Bell, working with some fabulously talented and smart women. That's all good stuff. If I can get better than that, then I'm gonna be a happy lady. It'll be all good, good stuff. All right, let's see another question. Let's see. Do, do, do. Somebody said, am I gonna add a transfer? I am not. This piece is gonna be 100% hand painted. You're gonna get chickens or crows. I can't decide yet, but most likely chickens because I feel like I really am tired of the crows. I've done them like five times. We're going to get all hand painted greatness on here. Let's add a little bit of blue on this cloud. So when your brush or your brush, your paper towel gets like really 
crunchy like that, you just want to turn it over and get kind of a fresh surface so that you can move your paint around as you wish. So this is the side that I'm thinking the rooster is going to go on. So let's have a little chat about the next plants because at this point we've got all the clouds down and I think that this is pretty much as good as I'm going to get for my background. So let's talk about planning for the next step. Up here, up here, where are you? <laughs> I can't reach. Hold on. Hold on. Taking you for a little ride. Okay, let's have a little talk about planning for painting things by hand, okay? So barns are easy. Barns are easy because they are, are square. Silos are easy because they are just a longer rectangle. I want you to think about hand painting in a version of shapes, okay? Because everything is just a shape. You can't tell me that you can't paint a bird because if you can draw a circle, you can paint a bird, okay? And I'm gonna show you why and I'm gonna show you how. So when you look at a rooster, let's hold up my hand, my hand drawing, okay? So I, I messed around today and I drew a rooster of this size on one side of paper. Because usually when I do crows, I use them as a silhouette. They are in the, the foreground, not the background. So I was messing around with a couple different shapes of roosters and or chickens, whatever you want to call them. But I, I think that they're roosters. They have the little gobbly gobbler on their head. I don't know what that thing's called, a comb. <laughs> they have the comb on their head. So if you can draw a circle, you can draw a rooster because a chicken or a rooster is just a couple basic shapes. What do you see? You see an oval, maybe another circle for the head. You're going to kind of change the shapes around. If you can look on Pinterest and Google how to draw a rooster. You're gonna come up with a couple different shapes, a couple different ways that you can draw a rooster because really, you know, a fancy pants rooster like this, it's just shapes underneath. So you all can do this. Just practice, sit down on the floor, get out your paper and draw. So this rooster, I was thinking I would do sort of fence post and stick him like right here. There's gonna be a rooster here. What I can't decide is if he should be a colorful rooster or if I should keep it muted and, and black like a shadow rooster because that's what I'm used to doing. So that part is next week. We're not doing the rooster today, but we will start the barn today if you like, and I can show you how to start that barn. But I just wanted to kind of give you the animal shapes and drawing 101 lesson, because I think a lot of people panic when it comes to drawing realistically, and you shouldn't, because everything in entirety is just different shapes. Know your proportions, figure out those shapes, draw it a couple times, we're gonna be able to do this together. So that'll be next week. You have to hang tight for some some rooster painting next week. But let's start on the barn, shall we? Let's see. You can, you can make, anybody can paint. You can all hand paint. Think about all the amazing things that you could paint by hand if you just, you know, got into it and tried, right? Okay, so I do use a ruler when I do my barn, okay? And I do draw it out somewhat with a sketch in pencil because you need to plan your piece and, and really look at proportions. So I'm going to turn it a little bit more towards me so that I can see it straight off. So when I look at a piece of art or a piece of furniture, anything you're looking at, and again, we're getting technical. This is your art lesson 101. <laughs> anything you're looking at, your eye travels in, kind of does a circle and goes out. Okay. You've got four quadrants on a piece that always have to have something of interest on it. So my four quadra quadrants on this piece are here and here and here and here. I'm gonna put the barn here, off center, and then it's gonna come over to the other side. So if I'm drawing a barn, well, I know that you basically need a square, right? So I'm gonna take my ruler, and it's gonna start in the grass, and it's gonna come up into the sky and come over. I'm just gonna do a rough outline of what I think my barn should be. So there's my one ruler mark. That's the side of the barn. I'm gonna make another square, even though it's not square across the top, because this is gonna help me plan where my roof line is going to go, okay? This is keeping me on track. A little bit of measurement saves the day. So now I know that my barn is going to start here and come over this way. It's gonna come over a little bit further and then it's gonna stop. So I'm gonna draw my end line right here for my end of my barn, okay? So now I've got my base, my body of the barn. When you look at a barn, you have a peak, right? So if this is the center of my barn, here, my peak is gonna come up here. I don't want it to be right on this edge because that would be weird. You have to look at it like it should be over a little bit more. Let's make it about here, okay? So I'm gonna peak my barn right about here. And I'm gonna bring it over this way. 
and then the rest of my barn is going to travel from this line over like this. Is that too much for you? <laughs> is that too much technical terms? Don't worry, you can always erase and start over. But doing a, a short little pencil kind of layout and using a ruler is gonna really help keep your lines straight and on narrow so that when you do do your hand painting and do come in here, um, you're not gonna be too off kilter. The other thing we're gonna add to these barns is I like a silo because it just comes up high and it adds dimension. So a silo is going to touch the edge of the barn and it's gonna come up just a bit higher. And it's about yay wide, I would say. So I'm gonna draw this silo coming up right over top of that pretty cloud. So sad because he was weepy and pretty. <laughs> I should have kept that one. And then I'm going to kind of curve it, okay? So knowing that your silo is going to be kind of curved like this. Now here's the next thing with the barn. Do you wanna add like another shack? Do you wanna add windows? Do you wanna add a weather vane? All that stuff is up to you. That's all detailing that you will get to. But when you do a base, you're gonna start right there. So let's start with a little bit of red and let's get into painting um, a little bit of a barn so that when we come back next week, we can work on the sticks and the grass and all of the other things, whether it be a chicken or a crow, and we'll go from there. All right, so I have a couple reds on the floor. I have barn red, of course, because hello, who doesn't need barn red when you're painting a barn? Let's just put paint in my hair, I can feel it. And then I also have rusty nail. Rusty nail is more of a reddish color and we're going to start with the reds, okay? So you're gonna come in and you're just going to kind of line it out how it's going to look on the front of the piece. So I'm gonna come in with my red and my rusty nail and we're gonna mix them together. So yes, this is gonna look way too harsh right now. Like when you look at this red, you think, yikes, that's much too red for what a barn should really look like. But this is just the beginning. There's gonna be a lot of hand painting and we're going to go directly over top of all of this work with lots of shading, it's lots of fun. I mean, is this too much information for a painting live on Dixie Belle paint page? <laughs> do you want more simple than this? But I really think that you can do this. This isn't hard. This is just something you kind of have to get used to. Painting, um, painting by hand because, you know, anybody can use transfer. Not everybody can do a crazy hand-painted version until you watch this video and learn how. I'm gonna go up here and keep doing this. Hi, Katie, how are you today? Okay, so here's my line, right? Here's my barn line. Let's be a little bit precise and come down knowing that this is gonna be the edge of my barn. Does it have to be a perfect straight line? No, but does following the guide help? Yes, so my guidelines are helping me bring it and keeping it a little bit more realistic because proportion wise it does have to be realistic you can folk paint you can do all sorts of different styles of painting um, but if your proportions aren't really good it's going to look off so just taking those few extra minutes with the ruler really helps kind of get it where it needs to go so i'm going to just drag this over here let's work a little bit on this side and then we'll do a tiny bit of the roof and then we'll come back next week how are we all hanging in you still liking this is it still good? I'm gonna have to get in here and do some red on the inside part of this covered door. Since I just painted my knob, I can't really open it. <laughs> I can't really open it and fix it. So bar red and rusty nail. Again, not being careful with my colors, totally just mixing them together and not even worrying about this edge because at the bottom we're gonna grow a lot of grass down there and bring it back up. What we are gonna have though is the roof. The roof is gonna come across here. So knowing that this line needs to be a little bit more defined, I'm gonna keep it on the straight. And again, that's coming down by the silo that we're gonna add. Okay. And if you mess up and you go over your line, no biggie. I mean, it's just paint. You're gonna be painting over top of it anyways, right? Okay. So there's my start of my barn red on the piece, okay? There's the barn. See it starting here? I want to open up my black caviar and bring a little bit more depth into this red. 
it's cute, but I don't want it to be super red. I want to add a little bit more darkness at the top, especially where the roof is going to come in. And let's add some texture. So by going up and down like this, you're creating kind of like barn beams. You're adding this kind of darkness to the piece. And it's going to be super dark right up here where the roof line would start, right? Because that's where it naturally would be darker. So adding the caviar is my shading. Because when you start painting and you start to think about, you know, shading and how things look in, in real time, Really, it's just darkness. It's just adding that depth, adding that little bit of, of black is making it look just that little bit more real. I'm dragging it. Again, I want it darker up here where the roof is going to be. And another way to make this look real, this barn, is that actually when we're done painting it, the barn itself, you can come in with a piece of sandpaper and distress this and the real wood color is going to pull through and make this barn look real. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the roof. So this roof is going to be, let's make it, let's do the roof in gravel road, shall we? So this roof is just going to be brown to begin with because you're just doing your base. I've covered all my clouds that I did, but so be it. <laughs> it is what it is. I did all these pretty clouds and now we're covering them up. But that's that's what painting is, is, you know, working on these little layers. Let's try and keep my hand steady to do the roof line. Okay. Good. Thank you for hanging in. If you've hung around this long, let me know if uh, this is something that you like because I hate to, to bore you all with something that people don't like. I want you to be interested in what we're, we're learning and what we're painting. I know I'm usually doing a lot more color, but this piece was just screaming, paint me in a farmhouse. <laughs> paint me farmhouse style in the Melissa way of doing things. Maybe we'll do a poll and see this is too, too boring for everybody on the Dick Spell Paint page. <laughs> and we'll finish it on my own page. But let me know. Drop in the comments below if you love this. And uh, it will reassure me that you're all still hanging in. Okay, so now we've got this little bit. So I want to add a little bit of, of the barn kind of coming down this way. I'm going to find this really tiny little brush. Again, these are all just local little craft store brushes. I'm just going to bring it down a tiny bit. I kind of want it to hang over the edge a little bit. There we go. So now let's add some more shading to this. Let's add a little bit of this beautiful brown chocolate. And, and I'm going to paint it kind of on an angle because I feel like this should be like the angle side of the, the barn, right? It's coming down this way. And I'm even going to come in with my caviar. And then I'll let y'all go and see what time it is. Now see, I touched a little bit too high. So I'm just going to change that and add this roof line just a tiny bit higher to cover my boo-boo. And then we're going to come down with this. I like that dark line at the top. And again, totally hand painting. Nobody expects it to be perfect, y'all. Can't be perfect. Perfect is boring. You want it to look real. You love it? Oh, I'm glad. I just don't want you to be like bored of like of my painting. I feel like I usually take you guys on a much more exciting journey. Okay, so so far, let's do a quick little recap of what we learned today. We came in with Mason Dixon Gray. We did Mason Dixon Gray down into some Savannah Mist. Savannah mist with a touch of sea glass. We then added these beautiful clouds and fluff 
which I think I actually want to do a little bit more up here. Let's add a tiny bit more just because I see a spot that I want to add a little bit more fluff. Um, after we did that, we came down to the base and we did kind of like a green, a green base, okay? The green base is just a bunch of beautiful green shades by Dixie Belle. Collard greens, we did a little bit of gravel road. I didn't do any of the palmetto, but you know what? We're not done on the base yet, so there will be other shades of green down there. We learned how to make clouds with this kind of little curling maneuver by moving your paint. We talked a little bit about how to add dimension onto a piece with some really pretty reds, some barn reds, some rusty nails, some caviar. So now when we come in here, we start to add all of the detail to the piece, okay? Because we're gonna be putting a silo over here. We're gonna put a rooster on the other side. We're gonna add like some fence posts. It's going to turn into a whole lot of fun. Then we're gonna come in and we're gonna distress all the edges. We're also gonna add some Dixie dirt, um, and it's gonna to start to look very true and authentic and real farmhouse style on the piece. So, what do you think? Was it worth hanging in to the end? <laughs> Did you learn something today? I'm gonna to bring you back next week. If you liked this, tell me in the comments, and I will continue this next week on the Dixie Belle paint page. If you thought that it was a bit out of your, you know, wheelhouse, I'm happy to just finish this on my own page and we can, uh, we can work on it over there. But this is a very simple way to take a rustic, old, ugly cabinet. I mean, beat up and ugly and make it look like it should be that way because all of a sudden all of this rusticness, all of these little divots and amazing things start to happen and, and it just turns into fabulous. I just love it. I really do, I love it. Let's do Let's do a little barn window, shall we, before you go? So when you look at a barn, they usually have like a, um, like a hay window, right, at the top? So we can add that up here. All you gotta do is gently just touch a little bit. It's, it's with an X, right? Usually the barns have that kind of X. I'm not even being precise. I'm literally letting my paint mix together. So now you've started to add a, like a little barn window. You can come down here and add a barn door. If I was a door, let's see, I would be framed in white, but then I would be really dark on the inside, right? I'd be like almost black on the inside. So we could take a little bit of that caviar. What if we can take some collard greens? That would be good. Some collard greens and some caviar. And watch, you can even spray it. Once you start to move, where's my spray bottle? Can you just start to move that paint around? because we're gonna be building grass up down here at the base, but you're just creating these really pretty little shadows. Just dirt it up some. Everything looks better when it's a little bit dirty. <laughs> I don't know why, it just does. I mean, I'm going to be flicking paint at this. You're gonna learn, learn a bunch of like little techniques to make hand painting kind of stand out. Get your fingers in there, mush stuff around. You don't have to keep it perfect. It looks better when it's being Bust out a little bit, you know? It looks better when it's drippy and realistic. But we'll continue this next week. I'm gonna read your comments. I'm gonna come back in and see if you enjoyed this kind of hand painting rustic look today. I'll continue it. Um, if, you, if you think that it's just a bit too much, I'm happy to do this over on my own Facebook page and you all can finish with me over there, adding the silo, adding the chickens, adding the grass and having some fun. So there's my Bob Ross moment of the day. I hope you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> fun um, because I'd be dying to get my hot little hands on this cabinet since I got the idea about the roosters. So maybe your homework will be to go to Pinterest, look up rooster silhouettes and start to learn how you're going to take a rooster and stick it on the side of this piece because we're going to do that. All right, sky's the limit. When you're playing with Dixie Belle paints, you can create hand-painted masterpiece with just like a little bit of time and a lot of fun. So stay tuned everybody. I'll be back. I'm live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. My name is Melissa. I am the Top Drawer RVA. You can find me on all of the little links above my head if you felt like buying any of these paint products today. You can start up there and then check them out. Um, everything that I use today, minus the artist brushes, can be found on that page. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you next week. Bye.